fuck? Oh my god. Oh, you see it's a leap. Yeah. Just got the GoPro on That's in time. The dingo. Dingo. Better not come running out of this. Nah. Oh, there he is. Oh, look at him. Oh, you see him? Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. After cycling most of the way back to town last night, we managed to find ourselves a nice little spot by the water, about 5k out of town. We were considering going into town and staying in the caravan park there, but um, like I had a look at it on um, satellite view on maps and stuff. It didn't seem like a particularly great like layout and stuff and it was a bit overpriced and we figured uh, we preferred the serenity of being a bit out of town. So that's what we did. There was like all this howling in the night and in the morning. I don't know if it was dingoes or if someone nearby has a bunch of dogs or what, but man, what a beautiful spot. We got like a gorgeous sunset out there. It was all things considered, it, it kind of worked out all right. So plan today, is back through Hawk's Nest, where we're gonna unfortunately go and join the A1, the main highway, which will take to Bolland... Bolandella? Bolladella? Bolland... Australian names, man, it's tough out here. <laughs> we'll go there, and then shortly after that, we should be like going back towards the coast, where we're gonna head towards Forster, and probably just try and camp on the beach. I spotted on uh, satellite view that was kind of a nice looking beach, sort of still in town. So if we don't find any way, anywhere on the way to Foster, we'll go there. Should be to that spot, it's 107k I believe. So yeah, should be a pretty decent day of riding. Gardens back past the ferry, everything we did yesterday, and now we're taking the back roads to the highway. And it's been quite nice, it's pretty hilly, but um, it's it's a lot better than just, just you know, taking the, the main road, the main busy road straight to the highway. It's nice to sort of have a bit of peace and quiet after all the traffic we've endured lately. Oh, I got him. I got him with the water. Yeah, just keep going though, don't stop. So that's what you do in a dangerous dog encounter. Keep riding and he, when he gets close, squirt him in the face with your water bottle. And even like, you know, the muscle, muscle bound jock of dogs that that was soon backed off. Don't sue me though if you do it and it doesn't work, all right? Like you, you do that at your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i guess this is the highway we finally made it after um you know avoiding the killer dog back there this isn't going to be so interesting i don't think ah we can go We just stopped at this little uh, rest area thing here and um, we keep seeing these like driver reviver things in Australia. I think it's like maybe like a little kiosk where overnight you can get like free coffee if you, you know, if you need a bit of a boost because um, I think Australia has a big issue with people driving long distances fatigued and or drunk. You know, um, there's like huge distances, there's long roads and people are, you know, driving them long hours. Um, Anyway, yeah, like this one looks like it's all locked up, but um, I'd love to check one out sometime <laughs> and see if I can snag some free coffee when we're cycling late at night. <laughs> So that was a delightful little place to stop. Nice little IGA, nice spot by the river to eat lunch. Quite a quaint little town. And now it's time to go back to the highway.
All right, uh, after another highway crossing, we are on to, I think it's just called the Lakes Highway or something like that. Yeah, the Lakes Highway, um, which is like a tourist drive. Hopefully that makes it quiet because everyone's in lockdown. So there's like no tourists. Guess we'll see. Um, but it does mean we're heading back towards the coast which was our intention when we left Newcastle to cycle the coast. We've actually um, scouted out another campsite. Um, I'd hoped that on the way to Foster, we'd like find somewhere to camp. Um, failing that, I'd like plotted out a, a potential stealth camp in Foster. But it looks like we've spotted like a picnic area on the way that might be a goer. But yeah, hopefully this road's fast enough that we could, we could do it in good time. What shoulder? Hey, Pigo. Hey, buddy. He's squealing. Careful, it's like marshy, it's boggy. Oh, he likes that. Let's go camping. I love him. <laughs> this little seat. <laughs> Hi, chickens. <laughs> Those chooks are turning up as well. Aww. Bye, Piggy. I'm sorry. All right, back on the road again after spending a nice night just outside of um, Pacific Palms. Seems like it's basically just a resort town, like a real touristy kind of place. Like pretty much entirely Airbnbs and you know, whatever. But quite picturesque. There's a reason people come here. So now we're just riding up to the Seven Mile Beach area, which is this like long, thin kind of spit of land joining up these two sort of uh, bits of mainland. Yeah, it should be quite pretty. Let's let's see what it looks like. So we are well and truly in beach cruiser land. Riding a beach cruiser, in your sandals, drinking a beer. Like, <laughs> it's nice, it's cool, it's be it's beautiful and it's chill, but it uh, you, you don't get anywhere fast. <laughs> so if you're looking for a nice park to maybe do a little sneaky camping, or even just somewhere nice, you know, that's gonna have good toilets, maybe some of the, you know, free barbecues to use, all that kind of stuff. You always wanna go for either a Lions Park, the Lions organization always make like awesome parks for whatever reason, or some sort of War Memorial or Anzac Park. Like the Australians really take the whole War Memorial, like Anzac thing really seriously. So, you know, if there's a War Memorial Park, they're gonna have like done a really good job of it. Pro tip. So once again, like great little candid moment and I got swept away in it and forgot to get the camera running. But um, we just stopped at this little um, 
nature reserve back there or the turn off to it to have some lunch and a fella called Rob comes over on his swanky new e-bike um, with a bunch of bike packing bags on it he just starts chatting and um, asks us about the trip blah de blah turns out he's in 2023 planning on going up to Norway and cycling all the way south through Europe so that's pretty sweet he noticed we had GoPros and cameras and stuff so he got all our social media stuff so he could have a look at it, us online and uh, he doesn't do social media but I told him well I hope you get something up for your, your Norway trip because we'd be interested in seeing that yeah anyway nice little chat to a cyclist at the side of the road that was great We spend most of the day riding on the highway, with the occasional respite coming in the form of a slightly quieter side road. Unfortunately, this would become a recurring theme in our time cycling the East Coast. We made our way to the small town of Kupanuk, where we knew there was a pub that had camping. We pulled up at the public toilets first so that we could fill our water bottles, and Bonnie could call up the pub and see if they had any room. All right, found the public toilets. So I'm going to get to filling up water. Bonnie is going to make a phone call. Okay, so answer from the pub was no. They're limited on space because there was flood, uh, a flood on the banks and uh, the, there's hardly any camping room. So it's campers only at the minute. Uh, rooms were a rip off, obviously. So um, I guess now it's the race against time to find a camping spot. Uh, the sun's getting pretty low, so we need to move. Pretty nice. Yeah. I think they're like totem pole things. <laughs> All right, we're just on our way out of Harrington now. Um, last night, um, we ended up not being able to find anywhere, anywhere to camp because it's just swamp or farmland everywhere. We had a really, really hard time. And with the recent flooding, uh, there's even less places to camp, so unfortunately we just had to go and stay at the Big Four. Yeah, well, it is what it is. It's kind of nice being somewhere where, um, you know, you're actually allowed to be there. <laughs> We're currently riding towards Crowdy Head. I don't know if there's anything there worth seeing. Maybe we'll do a bit of research as we get closer, have a bit of a, a snoop. But failing that, um, we're heading straight to Port Macquarie where we've got another warm showers, which is great. So we'll probably only spend one night there and just keep forging north. It also looks like we're in for a, a few days of rain and the worst of which is going to be tomorrow. So yeah, could be interesting. Crowdy Head was a haven for fishermen, like much of the East Coast. But unfortunately, there wasn't much there for a couple of bike tourers other than a pleasant view across the bay. So we turned back and found the gravel road that would take us north through the Crowdy Bay National Park. All right, bit of a mixed bag on this gravel road. We've had a couple of muddy patches to try and navigate. Not quite four-wheel drive territory, but getting that way. And oh, and some corrugations. <laughs> but mostly it's okay. But yeah, there are some rough patches, so uh, be warned if you're coming this way. Probably not ideal if you're on a, like a true road bike with skinny tires. It seems we're still seeing yet more damage from the bushfires, even all the way up here. We'd kind of been oblivious to it since Malakuta. We weren't really paying attention, although we did see some in Canberra. So yeah, it just shows you how devastating those fires were last year. It's, it's kind of nutty that even here where it's like basically swamps, all the trees are black and spindly and just torched, you know? We're finally off of that gravel. That last section was some corrugated nastiness. Um, but now we're just going over the bridge into Loriton, I believe it's called, which will be our lunch stop for today. Seems like at the minute we're getting into this sort of rhythm, kind of like we did in WA, where 
you sort of leave a town in the morning, you land in one for lunch, and then you land in another one for the evening. It's like they all seem to be placed like, you know, like 50 or 60k apart, which is very nice for lunch stops and for groceries and all that kind of stuff, you know? But it does make the camping awkward. Because when you're like right in a town, you know, it can be awkward being a bit stealthy. Anyway, Laurieton. Look at that. What a beautiful little place. All right, we just stopped in this little park. It's like right at the end of the bridge here and had ourselves a little feast of uh, the usual wraps with uh, peppers and cheese and hot sauce and all that good stuff. This pelican has picked a very small perch for a very large bird. What a guy. town overall like most of our little seaside town experiences so far have been not the best but uh, I quite enjoyed passing through there that was great um, now I think we're probably about 25k ish from um, Port Macquarie which is where we're staying tonight so should be a pretty short ride hopefully well it is a short ride but it should be in terms of time it shouldn't take us too long and maybe get a nice early finish today Our host in Port Mac isn't quite ready for us yet, but there's a brewery, so I guess we've found where we're going to be waiting for her. Huh? 